questions now from the appendix so that we get a good grip on what the FIFO process costing entails. So let's start with 6A1. This will take us to learning objective 6 and let's see what we have here. Quality Co. produces wine bottles for vintners in a process that starts in the melt and mold department. Data concerning that department's operations in the most recent period appear below and we have some data. Required. Quality Co. uses the FIFO method in its process costing system. Compute the equivalent units of production for the period for this department. Well, that is really the first part of the, uh, of the production schedule, which we know is called the quantity schedule and equivalent units. And it starts the same way whether we're using weighted average or FIFO. We start with units to be accounted for. And we begin with our work in process beginning count. How many units do we have already on the line at the beginning of the period? We have 400. To that we add our units started. Now these units started, some of them may be completed and some of them may end up still on the line at the end of the period. The point is these are the units that we began. So we have to account for 43,000 units, the 400 that were sitting there and the 42,600 that we started. Total units. So this is the same whether we're using weighted average or FIFO. Now we move on to the next part which is units accounted for as follows. Units accounted for as follows. And you'll see that this is the same. And we're going to compute our equivalent units over here. We're given two cost categories. We're given materials and we're given conversion costs. So far nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. This is where it actually gets a little different now. So what we're going to do when we account for the units is first of all we're going to deal with the units that were transferred. Because either the units were transferred or they're still on the line, right? So let's deal with the units transferred. Well what gets transferred first? Well the 400 units that are partially complete gets transferred, right? So work in process beginning count these 400 get transferred. But these 400 don't represent 400 equivalent units because some of it was already done. We want to turn these 400 into equivalent units by looking at, well, how much more work was required to finish them? That's the work that was done in this period, right? So we look at materials in terms of beginning count and we see that 75% complete, which means these 400 were 25% incomplete. Uh, incomplete, which means 100. And on conversion costs, we have 400 units times. We're told that they are 25% complete, which means they are 75% incomplete. So that 75% of 400 turns into 300 equivalent units. There we go. Next, we move on to units started and completed, right? Because if the whatever it can, they can't be transferred unless they're complete. So when we transfer something, the, the stuff on the line has to go first. So that 400 goes, and then it's whatever's left over. Well, how do we know what's left over? We have to look at all of the units that are transferred, and we're told that units completed and transferred out were 42,500. Well, these are the first 400 to go, so that means 42,100 were started and completed. And in terms of equivalent units, they're all equivalent. They're complete. So it's 100%, right? 42.1. Now we can look at our work and process ending inventory, work and process end count. And we can see just we need 43,000. We got 42.5. This should be 500. Let's look at our data. Ending work and process is 500 units. So we've accounted for our 43,000 units. But we have to turn these 500 into equivalent units by looking at the percentage that they're complete. And we're told that the, uh, in terms of raw materials, these 500 are 80% complete, times 80% complete is 400 units. Now, this is our ending inventory. That's what we completed in the month. When we go to the top of the next month, we're going to have to add some costs to finish it off which means they are 20% incomplete. So the costs we incur next month are to complete 
these 400 equivalent units into the full 500, which means the equivalent units for next month for this process will be 100. And here, of these 500, we find that they are only 30% complete, which means they are 70% incomplete for the top of next month. This is 150. So we can total up our equivalent units now. We'll get 42,600, and we'll get 42,000. 550. So all the costs incurred during the period of this month went to make this many equivalent units in terms of raw materials and this many equivalent units in terms of conversion costs. That's the first part of uh, the, the, uh, the production schedule for a FIFO inventory system. Exercise 6A2, learning objective number 7. Let's see what we have here cost per equivalent unit. Uh, Toller and Company uses the FIFO method in its process costing system. Data for the assembly department for May appear below. And we have costs added during May for three cost categories and equivalent units of production for three cost categories. And we are required to compute the cost per equivalent unit for materials, for labor, for overhead, and for total. All right, so we're looking at computing equivalent units. And we have materials, we have labor, and we have our conversion, uh, sorry, uh, not our conversion costs, we have overhead. And we're going to need whole cost. So our equivalent units on materials is 8,000, that's what we're told. Our equivalent units for labor are 7,000, we're told that. And our equivalent units for overhead are 7,000 costs incurred during the period cost incurred during the period now for the FIFO uh, um, um, method all we're concerned about are the costs incurred during that particular period we don't care about the cost of beginning work in process inventory we only care about that when we're trying to figure out what's the value of the units that were transferred but to figure out our cost per unit, we're only concerned about costs incurred in that period. So we have all the information we need. We are told that this was 41,280. This is 26,460. And this is 66,150. So all we're doing now is just a division. 41,280 divided by 8,516 plus... 26,460 divided by 7,000 is 378 plus. We do this division over here, we get 945. And when we add all these things together, we get a whole cost of $18.39. That is our cost per equivalent unit. It couldn't be simpler. The key point here, what this exercise is trying to stress, is that when we're figuring out our cost per equivalent unit, we are only concerned with costs incurred during the period. That's it. Once we have that, we can ignore any other dollar sign anywhere else. We're only concerned with what we incurred during this period only. Now, the costs incurred during this period go to three things. Some of it goes to complete the work in process that we are beginning with. Some of it goes to start and complete units. And some of it goes to start the work in process that we will end the month with. So there are three components to the costs incurred. So when we're figuring out our equivalent units, we have to figure out those three things. But we're, typically, we know our cost for the month in total. We don't have to pull it out of anything else. That's 6.6A2.